Hi everyone, it's Teresa from Sewing Together here and I am here to introduce to you our very exciting new range of patchwork templates. So I've got the hexagon set here. Now you will, the first thing you will notice is that they are 100% transparent. So uh, this is the um, one of the first in our range. Uh, it's a very ever expanding range. Um, it's growing quickly. So they're a little hard to see, aren't they? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to swap to a bigger screen with less of me and more of the templates, which is what you need. So you'll notice that lights reflecting off there. So um, what's new about our sets of templates? Okay, so first thing that you will notice is that they are 100% clear. So they are transparent. They are much thinner than templates, any other template that's available, and that they are flexible, which means that they won't break, and they are actually heat proof if for any reason you um, need to heat um, iron any fabric that's on it or anything like that. Um, it's just a little sideline that's handy. So they are made from 100% uh, recyclable mylar which I will talk to you a little bit later um, on in a different video or you can head to the website and you can find out a little bit more about the product that they're made from. Um, so um, the other thing, or one of the other things that I want to talk to you about today is that you'll notice, if I just pop, this is our two and a half inch hexagon, let me go to a mid size one. With our traditional hexagon or with our traditional um, hand piecing um, or template sets for patchwork, um, they were always have been made out of um, acrylic, which is great to rotary cut around if you choose to. Um, but they only have little corner alignment points. So you mark your lines and then if you're wanting to hand piece, you need to use another tool to actually mark your stitching lines in. So what we've got on our templates is you can mark in one go without moving your template your outer cutting line you can mark your corner alignment points and i've got halfway points on this one as well plus you can see a little split in there so that mark you can mark your stitching points as well so i'm going to show you how you use them a little bit later in the video but that is a unique feature of these templates it means that you can get your um, piece is prepared a lot quicker, a lot more accurately, and we can get to the fun part, which is the stitching, so much quicker. The, um, they're, they're transparent, which you'll notice, just got a little piece stuck on there, um, which means that if you're wanting to cut, fussy cut your fabric, or um, I'm, I call it focus cutting as well, so if you are wanting to, let me just grab a piece of fabric from here. So for example, if you are wanting to isolate a particular motif, because they're transparent, it's very, very easy to do that with the transparent motifs. Um, the acrylic templates also, because they're a little bit thicker, they're actually a little bit away from your temp of your fabric. So these are very thin and so they are right up against your fabric. So it's very easy for your focus cutting. And I do plan on doing a little video on um, little techniques and tips that I can give you for your focus cutting as well. And then of course, if you're wanting to repeat cut and do your fussy cutting, I'll have some little tips and tricks for that as well. And they are super easy to do because your um, templates are transparent and you can use a marker pen on them um, to give yourself some alignment points to cut um, multiple pieces of the same um, cut and repeat. So, um, these are designed for hand piecing. Now, for those that know me, know that I love hand stitching. So I love hand piecing. I love English paper piecing. But I do still love my sewing machine as well. So um, these are a lot of our templates are really, really great um, for a combination of uh, hand piecing and machine piecing as well. So we don't use any papers in these, like an English paper piecing. Um, some people would know that know this as um, American piecing as opposed to English piecing. Um, I like to call it just traditional hand piecing. And so when you piece the back of your work, 
so you have um, your little stitching line so it's much more along the same lines as um, a machine stitched quilt except that your rows of stitches are completed by hand rather than on your sewing machine but certainly with the larger pieces and for those that don't like to hand piece these could be used for machine piecing um, they're great um, for curved piecing I can actually find that I can hand stitch curved pieces together much more accurately and much quicker by hand than I actually can with a sewing machine so and it's really about preference um, so also if you are working with um, perhaps an embroidery or a sashiko or a textured piece of fabric that you might want to do a focus block so if you had a little embroidered hexagon that you wanted to pop in the middle these are fabulous because they are you'll notice that they're quite flexible and you can't do that with an acrylic template so you can actually just pop your acrylic template or your mylar template over um, say your embroidery and you'll find that you can actually get a nice flat marking line and a nice flat outside line nice and accurate shapes um, without getting that wobble that you would normally get with an acrylic template if you don't have a 100% flat fabric to start with so that's another wonderful optional extra I have to admit that I have broken a few acrylic templates in my time I've dropped them I've cracked the corners off them um, I've um, had them in a little tub and they've been shaken around and I have put little cracks in them um, I have tiled floors so I can assure you acrylic templates do not bounce very well they tend to crack these won't break these are super tough and um, and I've done this too um, if you bump them with the iron they'll be fine because they are actually from heat proof mylar so I know that acrylic templates um, are not heat proof but um, these are made from heat proof mylar so they will be perfectly okay all right so this is our hexagon set I've got a little panel here that I've made with the smaller hexagons so what I'm going to do is I am going to just move these out of the way grab a piece of fabric and show you how they work so I have grabbed a couple of little pieces of um, out of my Liberty stash, um, Liberty stash my tilde scrap basket and I have got just this gorgeous little tilde fabric here so I have got underneath it I've actually got a non-slip mat um, so it's called a design mat um, you don't certainly don't need this you can use a sandpaper board if you prefer so, so quite a few of you would be used to using a sandpaper board for applique pieces um, I love the design mat they're an Australian product as well um, I forgot to mention also with our templates they are 100% cut manufactured in Australia by a family-owned Australian business so I um, I don't cut them myself I get them cut for me um, to my specifications but they are cut in Australia by a family-owned Australian business which is just fantastic to be able to do that um, so we don't um, it's all done in Australia which is great okay so here we've got our template set so um, the hexagons come as a set of four and they come as a one inch hexagon a one and a half a two and a two and a half inch hexagon and I'm going to use the two and a half inch hexagon just to see, show you how they go so I'll just pop those aside I'm just going to turn my fabric over to the wrong side and I haven't given it 100% create a press what I've done is I have just removed the really heavy crease lines so it's been folded so it's just I've just got rid of some of the crease lines out of it and for my marking there's a variety of tools that you can use so you can use your good old sew line pencil or your Bowen um, mechanical pencils they are fantastic sew line also produce what they call a trio and so it has three different leads in it so mine has white black and pink in it so you just simply turn the nib disappears 
and that one's pink and that one's black so graphite like a normal red lead pencil you can use this set another lead pencil um, the other thing that you can use and I'm really wary about saying this but um, sometimes it's really hard for to find a pen that will show up on certain fabric colors so I actually use um, sometimes a friction pen now I'm very very aware that friction pens are not designed for fabrics I'm only going to do it on the back of my fabric I don't put any markings on the right side of my fabric with a friction pen in case it leaves a ghost mark and any quilts that I'm making are not heirloom quality the quilts that I make are a usable functional quilts so if you were making something that was a little bit more heirloom and that you want to have around for generations I certainly would steer clear of the friction pen but they are really handy to have only for marking on the back of your fabric where it won't get seen on those sometimes really hard to mark fabrics the colors just don't show up the other thing that I use I like to use is this is um, an archival ink um, it's a tan color and it's very fine it's less than a half mil nib it's a very very fine ink and it's just in a sepia kind of color and it, I find that it's absolutely fabulous for marking so what I'm going to do because my template is transparent I can actually line it up and make sure that I've got it exactly where I want it to be on my fabric I've got little stripes on my fabric and I can actually line it up on a little stripe on my fabric can draw around the outside so this becomes my cutting line okay draw around the outside going to take that away so you can see the shape there and I'll just reline it up again and now I'm going to mark my alignment points and my stitching line okay. so I've got my alignment points in the corner I've got my stitching lines and on the sides of these larger hexagons I've got um, a halfway point as well so that means when I come to sew them together I have got a reference point halfway which just helps with my alignment now this large hexagon would certainly be a super quick option if you're wanting to sew it together by machine we go there you go so that's how quick it is and all I have to do then is just cut out on the outside line you can see it there and I've got my stitching line and my alignment points ready to go for whether I prefer to hand or machine stitch so for those of you that love English paper piecing and love the fact that it's a portable project but your hands don't love it that you find that you get um, pain in your hands because I know I do with English paper piecing I'm going to encourage you to try traditional hand piecing I find it's a lot less stressful on my hands for those of you who don't have the ability to or the room space to be able to have your sewing machine set up all the time Hand piecing is a really great alternative for you. So you can have your template set, you can have a marking pen, a pair of scissors, your fabric, a needle and a thread, and that's all the supplies that you need. You can pop them away in a little um, storage container, so it only needs to be maybe about the size of an A4 sheet, um, so slightly higher a cupcake kind of container size or something similar that you would use in your kitchen to store a slice um, or a cake um, or um, a large lunch box and it means that if you've got little people around your house you can do a little bit of sewing 
without having to worry about getting your sewing machine out. If you're traveling, it's a perfect little lightweight. It doesn't take any power for those of you that like to camp off grid and are concerned about power consumption. Hand piecing is definitely the way to go. Um, it's also a really great project when you don't want to be tied to your sewing machine. So if you want to be spending time with your family, you've got a great little project that's really easy to prepare. It comes together surprisingly quickly and we have loads and loads of new designs that are being released each week um, to for you to enjoy um, and uh, I hope that you are going to enjoy our new templates. Here we go, so that's our two and a half inch. Um, check out our other videos where I'm going to give you an introduction on um, how to do um, really simple hand piecing, how to join them together, um, how to get started on your journey for um, traditional piecing if you've not done it before, and um, a little bit of a chat about some of our new shapes and designs. So we'll see you soon. Don't forget to go below, like the video, and subscribe to see all our latest videos on our new range of templates. Thanks for watching. Bye.